Apparently, the hit and run is on in front of the Minnesota Twins. They are hoping their new acquisitions won't allow any hits. Tyler Malley, Jorge Lopez, who lock in on the numbers. We haven't given him his due. And Michael Fulmer to Minnesota. We went into yesterday saying they needed some arm sneaky good deadline. What do you think? Oh, yeah, they had a great deadline. They absolutely need a starting pitcher. To add two bullpen pieces now to go with Duran, I, I think, uh, you know, Twins and company did a heck of a job. I agree. I agree. They become the favorites now to win that AL Central, in my opinion. We've been waiting for the White Sox to catch them all year. I think anyone who could pitch off their heater in the big leagues in today's environment, and Maley can certainly do it. He's got ride. They added two bullpen pieces. So for me, the Minnesota Twins had a great day. Do you feel divisional pressure if you're the White Sox and you're watching that? What are you thinking? I think the White Sox had a frustrating trading deadline, and I think if you talk to Rick Hahn, he was probably frustrated. You know, the one thing about trading deadlines that we don't talk about enough, they're, they're, they, the other clubs tell you how they feel about the players you have in your own minor league system. That's the reality of it. Other clubs will tell you whether they think you have a good system or not a good system. Wow. And I think the Giants and the White Sox got humbled a little bit yesterday at their lack of interest in their players. Because I'm sure both clubs try to be aggressive. Other people assessing your talent pool different right. and on the than flip you, side, right? Cincinnati did a great job of replenishing their staff. They got three of the top five from Seattle, three of the top 15 Absolutely. from Minnesota in the Maley trade. And then they picked up another back yeah, or one with Drury. Uh, d -Roy, you're right. They're focusing on 2025 yeah. in reality. And they've done a good job trying to position themselves for that. How do we feel about the Phillies moves, acquiring Noah Syndergaard, Brandon Marsh, and David Robertson? You were a fan of I'm in. You're I'm in. in. Dave Dombrowski, you made yourself better. David Robertson, to pair their bullpen's been throwing the ball well. Dan, so to add him, certainly he's been there. He was damaged you know, good I, when he got I, there. And I, I love Marsh. Yeah, I want to focus on Marsh. You know, Marsh is only 24 years old. Really interesting, D-Row. He had a great double-A season in 2000 uh, and, and 19. He was only 21 at the time. And then in 2020, he didn't play at all. In 2021, he had a short stint in AAA, and they bought him to the big leagues. He was not anywhere near a finished product. So what is this? What is what? You, how do you get rid of a player like that? You don't know totally what you have, but it's athletic as all get out. It's, sh it's shown moments of being an everyday impact player for you. And you flip them to the Phillies and you get back Mickey Moniak, who is the former number one one. I know it's all woven into the Was the catcher in that deal? deal? Well, oh, I, I, I think it yes. was the fact that they probably just looked at the catcher and valued it more than than Marsh. Than Marsh. Um, that was a but I don't know. That's a tough for one for me because I feel like his development has been rushed. And I think with time, he's going to be a good player. I like I that agree. acquisition for the Phillies a lot. I, I love what you said about the Phillies the other day. You don't have to win your division. You just have to be good enough to be dangerous, right, in a three-game set. And perhaps that's their plan. Joey Gallo to the Dodgers is interesting. Very. Usually, Andrew Friedman, we see, is aggressive a bit quieter this year. Well, I mean, really, what did they have to do? They just came off the best record of anybody in MLB in the month of July. And they've got Trinan's throwing bullpens right now. Greater Rawls coming back for the back end of their bullpen. Austin like with Chris Taylor's yeah. coming back. I'm just not sure. You know, you don't want to force deals. I thought Gallo, honestly, as crazy as it sounds, was a good get because I think in reality, the flip might switch with a lack of pressure and a change of scenery. Did you think he'd go to another I don't big give market? up on players like yeah, I this. Love that. He has a skill set that like 1% yes, of the league yeah. has. It's all here. Did There's you think some swing and miss, though. There, no doubt. That has some... swing and miss. No, you're going to ride peaks and valleys with him. Oh, you knew that? Forever. You knew that when he went to New York? Yeah. But what if you catch lightning in a bottle here? It obviously wasn't going to work in New York. I, I, I thought it could. I thought it could, but change of scenery for him. I think he appreciates it. I, I would agree. You always say I, I ask head scratchers. So I'm not going to know. It's just what this was. This was a this head, was scratcher, a head scratcher. Tell me why. And to listen to Brian Cash. I love Harrison Bader. We've done skyboxes on Harrison Bader. And to listen to Brian Cashman gush on the defense and the makeup and where he's from and the base running. And I get it. But you gave up a homegrown left-handed starter that has pitched in the AL East for a while now, north of 100 innings a year. Everyone's saying, well, he wasn't going to start a playoff game. He wasn't? 
How, well, that and how do you know? Like There's how many, two months left in the season. What, Bingo. You think he would? Yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah, no, not on, on paper as of today, but that, that could change. I just thought this was this was a head scratch. Yeah, I, I thought the Yankees, I said it on air yesterday prior to this deal, had one of the best trading deadlines of anybody in the game. And then they made this deal. I was like, huh? Because they traded starting depth uh, to get Efros uh, from the Cubs. They traded other starting depth to get other players. So their starting depth is nowhere near what it once was. And you always don't have enough starting pitching. And so I have no doubt Bader really helps their defense, but now their bottom of their lineup is Bader, um, Isaiah, and Trevino. Yeah. And in a postseason, you, like that's a role potentially for the next. They just inning. want Judge off his feet, huh? Well, I, they do protect Aaron Judge uh, absolutely, but Ben Tenney for me could have done that too, if you weren't comfortable playing Hicks out there. So. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious on this. We'll just have to see how it plays out. And, and I thought that he, he, he do we have to was, go? That's okay. The other New York team, the Mets. Don't say that to Mets fans. Don't say it. Well, like we got to talk about both of them, right? They made a couple curious moves for me as well. I, yesterday, J.D. Davis walks out the door with three prospects. Whether you love them or hate the prospects remains to be seen. For... Darren Ruff, who hammers left-handed pitching. I get it. Isn't J.D. Davis, and, and he wasn't raking by any sense of the imagination, but he's been in this organization for a while now. To watch him walk out the door, a more athletic version of what you're bringing in with three. I, yeah. Did you get better? Yeah. I, and that's I, not a knock on Darren Ruff. I like Darren Ruff. I'm just saying for the Mets to, like, if, if you got better, it was margins. Yeah, and I why yeah, and to trade the three out. players. I don't, um, I don't, I don't get that one at all. And they were they did a good job building on the margin because Naquin's a margin guy. Vogelbach. But you know, it's like the Mets now. You know, I look at the Mets. You know, they didn't big game hunt whatsoever. And I thought they they missed on Vasquez. Um, I thought he was a really good fit for them. You know, maybe they couldn't match up from a yeah. talent standpoint. The Mets are in a little bit of box. They have this upper level of about six guys that they don't want to trade because then their fall off is pretty significant. They're trying to, they're in this no man's land of a few more drafts before they can actually get to the point where they have a fertile system. I thought the weeks leading up to it, Wilson Contreras was going to go to the Mets. See, yeah, well, we can Which talk about nice. Contreras. I mean, I'm shocked that he didn't get. He was hugging. Not because the Cubs didn't trade him. I just don't think anybody offered anything of value more than a draft pick for him. But I look at the Rays. He was a great fit for the Rays, and they don't really prioritize catching as defensive as much as other people do, other than Zanino. But, I mean, even when the Red Sox moved Vasquez at the end of the deadline, I, I'm surprised they didn't make a run at Contreras. And good for you, Eric Cosmer. Good for you. It was in your deal. You had a no-trade clause. And that's a good you, place for him to go hit. You exercised it. And you got to somewhere where you wanted you know, to be. Did you read Manny Machado's comments after that? No, trade? what do you say? He said, uh, hey, we just got a great player, but we, we just lost one of the 100%. best teammates I've ever had. I believe that. And that I just matters. wonder in that deal that they forced too much with Hosmer in that mix of that clubhouse. One thing I will say, Eric Hosmer, the hockey talk man's not too happy about it. <laughs> Because he was supposed to go, and then we flipped the script, and now Hockey Tonk's got to go to Washington, D.C. It's my hometown. Would you easy? Uh, I get it. Hashtag MLB Central. Tell us what you think of the deal.